Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, today we're gonna learn how to fix your dull watercolors. And there's a very simple solution. This is something a lot of people struggle with and a lot of people ask about. How do I get my paints and my colors to look fresh, to look good, and to not go muddy, to not go too gray? Now, here's my take on it. I'm gonna give you my two cents and then we'll get into the process. One, it is perfectly okay to use grays. I'm not against it, but here's the problem. When you use multiple colors, even just three, and you end up mixing a lot of different grays, it's very easy to throw off the harmony. Even though you're using only three colors, it's very easy to lose the vibrancy and saturation just because you mix three colors and you get all sorts of weird grays. Now, the way to fix this is, if overmixing is the problem, not overmixing is the solution, but let's take it to an even more of an extreme. Don't mix at all. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to open up my reference photo and we'll get to it. Hopefully this camera continues working because sometimes it's a little problematic, but let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I am going to start with my yellows and I'm going to use my three primary colors separately because I'm not going to mix anything. So I'm going to start with everything that is that yellow, okay? Uh, and notice the sky goes from a gradient from blue to yellow, so I think we're actually gonna use that to our advantage. Uh, so here's what not mixing is all about. So I'm actually gonna use my phthalo blue here. I'm gonna change the angle of paper just a bit and look at what I'm doing, okay? So I'm using my phthalo blue like that and I'm actually okay if there's a bit of yellow in it by mistake because it's still gonna be uh, the same kind of color harmony, but I'm trying not to have too much yellow in it, right? Now, one of the things I have shown you is how to avoid uh, getting a green in the sky. So I do have to uh, do something to avoid the green in the middle, which is why I'm gonna introduce, and I'm gonna use Perlin Red this time, not um, Quinacridone Rose, and look at what I'm doing. I'm just introducing some red in the middle, and we're good, we're good to go. We can continue uh, with this wash. And again, what am I doing here? I am not mixing. I'm not mixing the colors together. Yes, some of them may mix by mistake, but it's not my intention here. And what I'm gonna do is cover the whole thing with this yellow, because that could be like a good little underpainting. And this is very accessible. If you're a beginner, if you're not sure um, what your skill level is at, you're just getting started, this is actually a great one for you, because we're not mixing. Okay, look, I'm just using the yellow purely and cleanly, okay? Later on, I can decide to glaze over it with a different color, but for now, we don't need that. Look at this beautiful effect we got here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is allow this to dry, uh, and then we'll continue. You'll see exactly what a beautiful effect we'll get by not mixing anything. So this is fully dry. Now the colors I'm using, just to reiterate and remind you, are phthalo blue, Indian yellow, and perlin red, okay? And we're gonna move on to the next step. This is pretty much fully dry, I think. And in this step, we're gonna start putting in the big shapes. And that's the thing I always tell you to focus on, the big shape. But the thing we're talking about today is colors. And look at what we're gonna do here, right? So I have a bit of yellow, but don't worry. We're gonna overpower that yellow with blue. So all I have to do, people often wonder why I don't clean the wells, because you just don't need to, really. Uh, and I'm gonna get started here. I'm not mixing. This is just my phthalo blue, okay? If the problem is over mixing, try not mixing. Now we will play around with values. So let's start here with those farther mountains on the top with that very light blue. In fact, look at what happens here. This is just gonna fade to the right, okay? And you can do this with any uh, color combination you wish, really. You can use uh, French Ultramarine instead of my Thalo Blue. You can do all sorts of things with it. But the key here is try not mixing. See if you can use the colors purely and still get a beautiful and pleasing result. The one thing I can guarantee you is that you won't get um, muted mud brown if you're going to do what I'm doing right now. Okay, that's the one thing I can assure you. Now whether you like the colors or not, that's up for debate and you can again choose which ones you want to use. Got to be a little careful around these small shapes. Now once I have that kind of a background and look at what I'm gonna do, I can start charging stronger and stronger paint into it and still get a 
relatively smooth edge because the paint is still wet. Now, if you truly want to darken colors, sometimes you'll have to resort uh, to using a bit of black or a neutral tint or even just connecting this thalo uh, blue with a bit of quinacridone rose or you know a different red sometimes that's just a, ne a necessity but i think this is good enough honestly and this covers our left side now look at what i'm gonna do here with the trees on the right side so we don't have a lot of red here so why not add a bit of red and i love trees that have a little bit of red in them uh, that, that indicate maybe it's fall or maybe there's a bit of a, you know, leaves are falling and it's just a beautiful time of the year and beautiful season. And look at how I'm holding again the paper at a bit of an angle to help the paint move. Sometimes I want to have what's called manual control over this so I'll actually hold uh, the paper like that instead of putting it at an angle on my desk. Now one thing you can think about is connection. So feel very free to connect this rooftop to the foliage if you please, but you don't have to. I'm gonna paint in shapes. And notice one more thing, we're kind of working from uh, light to dark here. Uh, we did the highlights with the yellows and now we're moving on to slightly uh, darker shapes. One more thing to have in mind is you can either use a sprayer uh, or you can just come back with a damp brush, kind of help some of the trees spread out a bit. But the key here is if you're gonna practice a technique you can practice one technique at a time. In this instance, we're practicing not over mixing. Now, when you look at the roof, it kind of begs to be mixed uh, into a purple, right? A bit of a, uh, that uh, blue and red. You can decide to do that. You can decide not to. Let's see what it will look like. So we get this kind of a thing. Actually, if I add a bit of quinacridone, we should get a bit of a more purpley, cleaner purple. So why not do that? And let's mix these two together. So let's go back to my point. Again, when you mix three colors especially, you're far more likely to mess things up. Now, even if you just make the decision to limit yourself to two colors, you'll do very well. And this is kind of what I did here, right? So we only mixed in a very controlled manner two colors. So that's something you can consider doing if you wish. You can do whatever you want, right? It's your painting. You get to make the decisions. That's going to be the shaded part of this wall. And here down there, I see a bit more purple again. So we're going to do that again. Now look at where it gets a little more important. We're going to negatively paint around the fence. So let's move this all the way down so that we can finish the structure off. And I do see this lovely cast shadow. So I'm going to lighten it up and then come back with pretty much just a blue so that I can cast that shadow and we made this connection. So now it looks a little better, um, a little cleaner than just a strong line like that. And then you can start filling in some negative shapes in between the fence. Of course, you can use uh, masking fluid. You can use whatever you want. You can use um, tape, whatever works for you. That's how I do it usually. Just practice my negative painting. And then same goes for this fence here. But the, the key idea is we're gonna leave the highlights behind, okay? And as for the front part here, uh, I'm gonna leave that pretty much the same, but one thing you can do is maybe add a bit of heat to it, especially the top right here just a bit of heat and then we can use our smaller brush to blend that down just because there's there seems to be either a shadow or a pattern of the wood that is showing because of the sh shadow maybe on the roof whatever that is uh, that we want to show now i will have to mix a very dark paint here for this top part so i'm gonna break my rule and just mix a black using my phthalo and my quinacridone, but it's for the purpose, I'm gonna add a bit of neutral tint, it's only for the purpose of producing this very dark black color that would have been a little tough to produce otherwise. And that's pretty much the only place where I'm gonna break my rule. And again, self-imposed rules are self-imposed, so you decide what to do with them. Uh, my brushwork is a little, I'm a little, um, uh, I didn't do a warm-up, that's the thing, so you'll have to forgive me for that. And then let's bring back some of that pure uh, Perlin and kind of get this thing red because it does look a little red. And I'm going to let it touch 
some sections of that dark color. And as long as they don't mix too much, I should be good. Oops, almost dropped my brush here. So it's something like that. And that pretty much covers the structure, uh, at which point you can start attending to the fence. And the fence, we can just use a blue for that. Something like this. And just get it. I'm gonna move the paper at a bit of an angle just to make sure uh, that I get these lines in accurately. Otherwise, it's just very hard to get horizontal lines accurately. This line, that line. Look at how much grace we've created simply by removing some colors. And that's something you want to maybe consider. We remove colors, we only use the three primary colors, and we only use them pretty much not mixed ever. Uh, and that's what leads to this beautiful result. Of course, we can go back and add a few shadows in just one second. First, let me add a bit of detail to the front. Uh, and I'm gonna use this, this looks fine to me. Even though it's two colors mixed, pretty much, it's the uh, blue and red. And I'm gonna use that just to create a bit of a pattern here along the ground because my foreground is quite empty and I re decided to remove this cast shadow. I did not want that here. I uh, just didn't, didn't feel like it has any meaning if I don't see the thing casting it. So that was pretty much a spur of the moment decision uh, as I was planning the drawing. Now I did plan the drawing stage, so you know. Now I'm gonna do something interesting. The closer this gets to us, the purer the red I'm gonna use. So I wasn't planning on doing that, but generally colors tend to be a little more vibrant and a little cleaner and purer the closer they are. Plus, uh, the grass blades or ditches or whatever that is, right? You, we don't even know what that is. Maybe it's just pattern of the ground, not even foliage, uh, is gonna be larger the closer it is. So you see I'm making these a little more prominent the closer they get to us, and that really helps with that feeling of depth and distance, right? But this is a very uh, illustrative or maybe kind of very designed way of painting uh, because we're really simplifying the colors here. Now, if you want to get some motion here, take your sprayer, go like this, maybe even use your finger just to kind of move a bit of it around, you know, to get some kind of a uh, more looser impression of that. Um, maybe I'll even come back with some water because I feel like I could smear it around even a little more and add a few more sections similar like that just to give the ground a bit of a texture but this is all just you know design of the finishing kind of design and touches it's not really the, the actual thing right the, the, the focal point is here that's all we care about now let's let this dry for a few more seconds and I'm gonna finalize it with a few touches and details okay so everything is dry and look at how I'm gonna finalize this with very few simple brush marks now at this stage you can allow some paints to mix together uh, but let's be kind of square and not do that okay let's continue with our theme i'm just using some blue here look at how blue this section is right now one good thing about this technique is that it teaches you how to notice the colors that are dominant and maybe exaggerate them so in this example here it's very blue, right? And you know that you learn to notice that it's a little blue and exaggerated. Now, where people get this technique wrong is they use, let's say, more than three colors that are all equally saturated. And that can lead, as I mentioned before, to very amateurish looking paintings. But in this context of using just your primary colors and uh, using just three of them and not mixing them at all or maximum two and in some select spots, you will be okay. In that case, you should be good and you should not have to worry too much about you know the end result and how bad the, the color combination is gonna be. But I think this is really a wonderful technique to explore and see if this self-imposed limit can actually lead to more interesting results. Like here, I really like the result and it's not what I would normally produ have produced uh, otherwise, right? And uh, you can decide to make a few small changes if you want, like uh, here, uh, these uh, this tree uh, or wood pattern goes like this, right? So I can decide with the rooftop to go like this or I can decide, let's go the other way around. And the fact that you're just using the same three colors 
not mixed together at all or maybe just in few select spots really adds a lot to this so i really hope you'll give this technique a try again if your problem is this let's try something else over here then i have nothing against gray paintings but the problem is the more you um add more and more different colors and and you make even more than three which very often i see people do you just get something that either looks amateurish uh, or just looks too dull and when you look at someone like Joseph Zbukvich for example and he has so many gray paintings don't be mistaken by the simplicity of grays because they're not simple he knows exactly what gray he's mixing he knows if it steers closer to purple or closer to green or closer to uh, brown or closer to orange he knows all these things closer to yellow his um, and I'm gonna remove the tape as we talk here his um, his grays are aimed towards a specific goal. It's not just uh, winging it and using whatever gray he feels like it. So don't let that uh, mislead you. There's a lot of thought behind this. So if you want to get to a point where you master that, let's first get to a point where we master this. We master just colors. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you have, don't forget to check out the link in the description box below to my frustration-free watercolor course, which will show you exactly how to let go, enjoy the process. It will show you a few actions you can take to automate your painting process and make yourself faster without improving your skills it's just a few decisions you make before painting it'll show you how to paint with a more direct approach a la prima it will show you everything so if you still haven't checked it out i highly recommend you do i want to thank you so much for watching if you can leave a like leave a comment and subscribe if you still aren't that really helps the channel grow and reach more people and i will see you again in the next video